Hey guys, Jennifer Tardy here, your career success coach, and welcome back to the career success channel for UPs or underrepresented populations. And we're back for another episode where in today's episode, I'm gonna share with you all about how to prepare for a phone interview. Phone interviews can be just as intimidating as face-to-face -face interviews, but if handled properly, you can be just as successful in a phone interview as a face-to-face. So sit tight and don't go anywhere because I always give you a gift. It's the career success bonus tip for underrepresented populations, but I don't show that until the end. So stay tuned and let's get started. So just to get us started, I wanna let you know um, a couple of things. Phone interviews that take place before being invited in for an in-person interview typically happen for two reasons. Number one, the recruiter wants to do a pre-screen. Number two, the hiring manager or someone that they delegate typically wants to do a phone interview before bringing you in. In other words, they're getting a first opinion, which is the recruiter, and then they're getting a second opinion, which is typically the hiring manager, before deciding whether or not they want to invest in bringing you on site, face to face for that interview. Now, today's video is going to help you to prepare for the phone interview with the hiring manager or the number two, right? The hiring manager. Next week, I'm going to show you how to prepare for a phone interview with the recruiter. So in this video, here are three tips that can help you to get ready for that hiring manager phone interview. But wait, as a side note, if you're following me, you probably heard from me last week that we have our newest course available in our Career Success University, and it's called Offer Magnet Interview. So if you want to work with me directly to learn what happens behind the scenes to get yourself ready for an upcoming interview, then take Offer Magnet Interviewer by going to jennifertardy.com slash interview, and you can find us there. Okay, all right. Enough, let's get right into these three tips. Tip number one, understand the pros and cons for a phone interview and prepare for them. Now, there is this bittersweet sentiment that I have with phone interviewing. Now, on the one hand, the interviewer can't judge you by something ridiculous like your look or maybe even the nonverbals that you don't even realize that you're showing during the interview. Now, on the other hand, there's more emphasis placed on your words, those things coming out of your mouth. So in other words, your look and your nonverbal expressions, although they can't hurt you from getting the job because no one can see you, but they also can't help you. So if you're that person that you know has a beautiful smile and you use a lot of expressions non-verbally to show that you're excited, that you're enthusiastic and that you're there, they also can't help you <laughs> either. And yet you also know, or you at least maybe you've heard, that when you lose one of your senses, it just heightens the other senses. And so keep in mind when you're on the phone, if all they can do is listen, they are going to pick up on more things than they probably would have picked up if you were in person. So just remember this, whenever an interviewer loses the ability to see you, then what they hear from you becomes more important. And so there are a couple of things that I want you to remember with this first tip. Number one, you must be better able to clearly articulate your answers to questions or to clearly articulate why you're the best person for this job. Number two, you must be able to demonstrate through your tone, through your words, through your octave, through the fluctuation in your voice, that you are excited, that you are engaged, and that you are happy to be talking to this company, this employer. That becomes ever more so, if that's a word, <laughs> ever more so important during a phone interview. Okay, so moving right along, tip number two for those of you who are getting ready for a phone interview. Make sure that you know your resume narrative. 
Now, you've heard me say on <clears throat> numerous occasions that employers only, the recruiters only spend six to seven seconds on your resume. Now, once your resume moves beyond the recruiter to the hiring manager, because there are so few resumes that actually make it to the hiring manager, that six to seven rule goes out the window. Many hiring managers spend more time diving more deeply into your resume, especially as they're trying to prepare for the phone interview. It's really important to them that you have the right skill set, so they're going to pay more attention to things that maybe the recruiter didn't have a second to dive as deeply into. In the phone interview, the employer will most likely take more time dissecting your knowledge, skills, and abilities and asking you to speak to those. For instance, they will want to know why you decided to leave a specific organization, why you decided to get a certain degree, what went into winning the award or getting the accomplishment that you had, what went into or what was your role in certain projects, teams that you led or that you were a part of. They are trying to reconcile the person on the phone with the person that is listed on the paper. And so the more easily you are able to um, to address what's already been written in the in your resume or to pull up things that, that you know that they are talking about in your resume, the more seamless that phone interview was going to go. So make sure that you spend time actually studying your resume. And I know you hearing me say studying your resume sounds pretty funny, but odds are some of us looking at our resume, it's we haven't looked at our resume in the last two or three years, and now we're submitting something and we forgot what we even put in there. Okay, so that's enough about tip number two, but the point is just make sure that you know or you understand the story about you, the career story about you, the narrative about you. So a quick pause for a second. Has an employer ever, ever, ever asked you, why did you leave your last organization? Or why are you looking to leave your current organization? If they've asked you that before, I'm extremely curious as to what your answer was. Tell me in the comment section below. Let's get a conversation started. You know I love talking to you guys. So tell me below, how did you answer that question? Tip number three, make sure that you are ready and willing and prepared to dive deeply into your experience for this role. Now, here's what's really important that I want you to understand. The, the hiring manager, who is the person that is interviewing you, who will be the person that you'll report to, is typically the person that is closest to the position. So they know um, probably the next in line next to the person that's in the role, um, how that role functions, what it takes to be successful in that role. And so they are going to be the person that's probably going to dive the deepest into your technical expertise. Do you know how to do this function? And can your experience confirm that you know how to do this job? So they're going to be the person that's going to dive way more deeply into your experience, but specifically as it compares to this role. So make sure that you are prepared to dive deeply. And a, the best way to prepare yourself to dive deeply into your experience as it relates to this role is to make sure that you read the basic qualifications in the job description and that you have examples of how you've already met those qualifications because they wouldn't be in the job description under basic qualifications if it weren't um, important to the employer. So pay attention to those, okay? So now we're at my favorite section, which is the career success bonus tip for UPs or underrepresented populations. And okay, this is one of my favorite things to talk about as I'm giving tips, especially for people who are interviewing over the phone. Please make sure that you watch those nervous ticks. And when I say a nervous tick, I mean the ums, like um, um, or the like, 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 or you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So when I, I call them nervous tics and I also call them space fillers. Typically we start using um, or you know what I mean? Or like, because we are uncomfortable with silence, especially in interpersonal communication. And so, the more uncomfortable we are with, with the silence, the more we start filling in the silence with nervous tics. 
And most of the time, we don't even realize we're doing it. So what you need to do is make sure that you go and talk to a friend of yours, a loved one that you trust and respect their opinion, and ask them, do you have any nervous tics? Do you have any space fillers? Because you need to watch that. And the only way that you can, or one of the ways that you can really overcome a nervous tick like that is slowing down and becoming more present and in finding a way of being comfortable with a pause. That's a pause. I'm comfortable with pauses. Are you comfortable with pauses? Okay, okay, so I have to ask you another question. Do you have a nervous tick? And if you have a nervous tick, tell me in the comment section below, what is your nervous tick? Mine used to be, um, and I used to say um all the time. Maybe you've heard me say it a few times during this video, but um, I meant to do it. <laughs> Okay, so if you're watching this video and uh, it must mean that you are ready to interview and you're already in the interviewing phase. So I wanna offer to you a gift, which is a free downloadable guide. And it has 25 of the most common interview questions that you're gonna receive during an interview and my version of top-notch answers. So make sure that you download that guide and get to studying and practicing and getting ready for an upcoming interview. And you always know what I say. In order for us to be underrepresented no more, we need to listen, engage, apply, repeat, and we have to do it now. We must learn. Until next time, I'm Jennifer Tardy. I am your career success coach, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.